Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Property Pros Podcast. I'm Mark Goldwich, public insurance adjuster in Jacksonville, Florida, but interested in all things property. We've got two great guests for you today, kind of a two for one. Brandon Youngs is the owner of Southern Holiday Homes, and Evan Welch is one of his property managers. Brandon, take a minute or so and tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. And, and it's just such a, a pleasure to be on the show and, and, and to be able to speak about all things property. And um, so, yeah, my name is, is Brandon Youngs. I'm, I'm the owner of Southern Holiday Homes, as well as my wife, Ashley Youngs. Um, so we employ a staff that manages vacation properties down on 30A Highway. So um, that is a strip of property that runs between Destin and Panama City um, down there. So we manage anything from Rosemary all the way down to Stinkies, as some people would know whenever they, they do that, which is a little bit past Blue Mountain and so on and so forth. But um, we manage a, a variety of properties all over 30A. Um, that really our focus is to, to create a great guest experience, a great travel experience, um, to take care of our owners, to maximize revenues, um, and, and to really just have, have, have a great time and, and promote the lifestyle there that's available on 30A. Um, so, yeah, so my job is really to support our, our department heads, our, our operations department, our sales and marketing department, our finance admin and um, HR department, and, and remove barriers, make their, uh, make their jobs a lot easier to deliver those experiences to our guests. So I focus on that each and every day, um, and that's my primary role. And with Evan and great people, um, it definitely makes it a lot easier. But again, thanks so much for having us on. Cool. Appreciate you having here. Evan, kick it off. Um... Tell us, uh, tell us about you. Yes, sir, Mr. Mark. Well, I'm Evan Welch. I'm a property manager down here on 30A, as Brandon was saying, for Southern Holiday Homes. I'm originally from Atlanta, um, but my mom decided to let me stay in high school to graduate with my class and all my friends and waited until I did that to move down here about five years ago. So I've been coming down to the area, 30A specifically, Blue Mountain, um, for about five years. Just worked, I've worked about just about every job you can you can do down here, whether it be working at a bike shop. Brandon knows that I'm the bike guy. But uh, for, yeah, whether that be working on the beach, other stuff like that, that's, that's what I do. Also, I enjoy um, creating content for the company as well, doing some drone work, a little bit of photos, graphic design. Just all that other good stuff, like Brandon was talking about, social media and whatnot like that. Well, that's cool. Um, you know, I've been up in that area mostly for work, unfortunately, and mostly more to the west in Pensacola, but uh, have been through through Destin area a uh, couple times, more unfortunately briefly. Very beautiful area. I can I can see what it, what attracts you there and, and keeps you there. Um, I guess. Um, Brandon, tell us how did you how did you, you get into more of this vacation management rather than the, the typical property management? Yeah, so uh, phenomenal question. Um, COVID happened, um, so that that was that was one of the things. Um, so uh, I have about a fifteen year career uh, career in hospitality. Uh, my last role, I was a regional director of marketing for Wyndham. Our regional offices were based here out of Knoxville. Um, at that time, though, we still owned a home. Uh, I was a director of marketing prior to that role um, in Chicago for Wyndham. Um, and my wife is kind of funny with joke. She said, if you're going to move me to Chicago, you're going to buy me a home on the beach. So um, <laughs> we, had, we had vacation down there for about the last 15 years as a family. And even, even when my wife and I were dating uh, prior to us getting married, um, and, and just had, had, a, had an amazing time. So, so we bought a home down there um, and, and then started to self-manage. Um, COVID happened. Um, there was no longer a need for my role um, within, within the organization. I have absolutely nothing bad to say about Wyndham as an organization. They did a phenomenal job. They really took care of me and they had to do what was right for them in the time. So with that being said, um, it opened an opportunity um, I had met a realtor down there that has done very well and, and been very successful. Um, and he asked me what we did when we were self-managing our personal home. Um, and, and I told him and, and he was kind of shocked at the number and then asked, you know, kind of prove it, so to speak. Um, so we did and, and showed him all the actuals. And then 
from there, um, it led into, well, I really think that you guys should take this and start it and create a business. And with a very, very small amount of money to invest in a website and a lot of grit, determination and pride in our process and what we're able to deliver for ourselves and then for our future clients and owners, um, we decided to go ahead and, and, and jump in, you know, uh, feet first. So, so we were in and, and, and then got some referrals and turned those into clients. And then one thing led from the next and, and we went from about, you know, two properties to 40 something properties and, and less than about 16 months. So, um, it, it's been an amazing ride. Um, but that is definitely what has led me here. Um, my wife is, um, on the finance side of things. So she was the, um, she was, she was the U S finance manager for a private equity firm that was based out of London, that she left her job full time to, to run, uh, to, to run the business with me. Um, and then, um, and then, you know, she, she's worked for Clayco and the Coke brothers and some other folks as well, which has been phenomenal in terms of her financial and accounting background that's helped really help the company. And then, you know, from a marketing sales standpoint, mine operational standpoint, um, it's really kind of married itself into this beautiful relationship that we're able to really create um, a great environment um, on 38 to, to have people create great memories, but also to employ great staff and create a great culture, um, which which ultimately will will lead you um, to 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 a lot of success. Taking care of those people um, that are delivering on the product each and every day are really important. And, and even in a service in industry, you're still delivering a product at, at, at the end of the day. You're delivering a, a great vacation experience. So having everybody dialed into that and really honed into that as our mission is really important to the company. Cool. You know, one of the reasons why we do the podcast is because we have questions ourselves. We, I don't know everything about property and property management. Uh, I'm in insurance and I, and I know that field, but I'm interested in um, anything related to property, but I also have all kinds of questions. My, my wife's family has, has a, it's called a vacation share. So, and they've had that for years and, and we actually use that a lot. How does, give us a, a kind of a, a how does this uh, compare with things like that, VRBO, Airbnb, those kind of things and how this is different? No, that, that, that's a phenomenal question. Um, at the end of the day, anything that puts anybody on vacation to have a great experience and make memories is, is a quality product. Um, I mean, that, that's why we all do it. Um, where, where, we're, where we're different, at the end of the day, we, we manage private residences. Um, these belong to people um, and they sign a management agreement with us to manage and to market their property. One of the interesting things about 30A is really, I mean, I would probably say, and don't quote me on on, on the numbers, um, but about 80 to 85% of the properties on 30A are, are secondary homes or vacation rental properties. You really only have a handful of boutique uh, hotels. Um, it, it's not a, you know, and nothing, you know, Panama City has a different model, Destin, there's more hotels, there's more, there's different ways to travel, really 38 lends itself to that vacation home experience. So we manage private residences that we market on multiple OTAs, whether those be VRBO, Airbnb, there's a number of others, um, direct bookings, but we are sourcing you know, guests to come and stay at private residences. So really, again, they're home away from home style of accommodations. Um, some of those homes are extremely large. Um, some of those homes can can really, you know, take 22, 20, 24 people, some of them. Some beachfront property, a beachfront property that we manage, you know, can manage 24 people. Um, that's a great place to get together to have a family under one roof to really share, share an experience. Um, not to say that maybe a, uh, a sharing of time and, and another aspect of real estate or however you manage that uh, isn't a great experience as well. Um, but at the end of the day, it, it is not through a, a major corporation. It's through a private owner that owns these properties and then employs a management company to really allow them to utilize, again, their home away from home. Um, so, so that's a very unique opportunity on 30A. Um, and benefit, but also a lot to live up to because, um, you know, the, the, the rental rates, so on and so forth, 
uh, on 30A, as people are aware that do travel there are, are, are rather rather high. But again, there's a lot to offer and it's all about the value of the dollar. So at the end of the day, if they believe that they're receiving that value for what they're spending, um, which it, it would tell just in the statistics alone of people traveling and the occupancies and the ADRs that they're driving, um, that, that people are really enjoying that accommodation right there on, on 30A, right there in the painting. All right, cool. Uh, Evan, um, how did you how did you get involved in this? How did you meet Brandon? How did it how did it all kind of go down step by step? So, I mean, really getting into property management, um, I can thank my mom for that. Probably about two or three years ago, she worked for another company down here on 30A. Um, and some days I would just go tag along with her. She would go maybe four or five, six properties, but I really I mean, it was different from another job um, per se that I've worked before. I mean, it's a lot of moving around. I like to move around. I don't like to sit in one place. Um, I might get up during this, but who knows? But um, yeah, it's just a different feel, you know, like you're not sitting in an office. You're really, it's really hands-on, hands-on work, um, getting in there, making sure everything looks okay, no damages, everything is ready for, like Brandon said, that vacation kind of a home away from home and going back to what Brandon said I think what makes 30a a little different is um you have these homes that he said they're rather large and I think that really drives families here because you can't just bring one family you could probably bring two or three families I want to say and that's definitely definitely a driving force here on 30a I think that you just other places that I've been personally like Miami and stuff like that you're really in those high rises and it's only about two, two to four people that can fit in those and come down here and stay in one of our properties. It's really, it's definitely family oriented, oriented and feels like a home away from home as well. Yeah, I know it's cool. I mean, we have done it in my, my wife's family. Um, they, they do a family reunion every third year yes, absolutely. and we, we go somewhere else and we, 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 I think at one point we had maybe 32 people in one home. I don't know. Um, a little crowded, hey. but, um, but a lot of times we'll, we'll either get um, a couple of, couple of smaller homes or cabins and a cul-de-sac or in a little right. area. Absolutely. And um, yeah, it's, 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 it's a lot of fun. It really makes for, for a great large family get together, especially if you're in, you know, three or four homes yeah. that are right in the same area. You could walk to them. You can go out and do things together. You know, it makes it kind of kind of tough to to dine out. You know, when you've got twenty five people there, but sure. you could always you could do it at the house too, or at the homes you get in front of one and there's a grill or something. Right. It really does make for a great experience. So easy to see the the attraction to it. Um, really from, from both sides, um, from the consumer side and from your side, the property management side, that you get to provide them with this awesome experience. You must have um, some stories of uh, some great adventures that some families have, have had or, and, or maybe even some unusual circumstances that uh, you've run across, if you can, if you can share that. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure Evan has has maybe quite a few. There, there's one that stands out in my mind, and I'll share um, just that kind of you know really puts us in perspective for me, and, and really makes me enjoy what I do, um, and, and what we're able to provide. Um, before I get into that experience, I will say like even what we experience, we manage condos and other things that are great, even for for you know um, getaways, for you know uh, uh, you know. Faint, like not just family, but even smaller families, or even or even a, a, a you know husband and wife, or or a, a situation in that regard that that really create and lend a dynamic. So we manage every spectrum from something that'll sleep twenty four all the way down to four and or really six and eight. You know, um, is really you know kind of what we focus on. But thirty eight has been phenomenal for for anybody or any any person's vacation that they they want to take. Um, you know, there, there's one thing that, that stands out to me, and, and this really kind of speaks to the culture of, of what I believe is the essence of vacationing and doing things. I, I grew up, I, I, 
I took a few vacations here and there. Um, my wife, bless her heart, she is a phenomenal individual and really believes in making memories, vacations. It almost even led me into the industry that I'm into today. Um, um, but with that being said, there was uh, someone, a, a family, and I'm not going to mention names or, or anything like that. But there was a family that that stayed in one of our properties that was really close to the beach. It was it was about um, two steps across the beach. It was right down the street from the Blue Mountain Beach Creamery, where you can go and have some of the most unbelievable ice cream that you could possibly have. I wish I could still have ice cream. I don't. I can't, unfortunately. Um, but my kids do. My wife loves it, and, and and apparently so do this family. But what I will say is is one of the things we have a guest book in every single house. Were they able to write reviews and this and not only that, but social media, they post a lot of stuff online. Um, but but the most sentimental things I still feel like are very personal and, and they're still written in the guest book, um, which is in every one of our houses. Um, and this family had some circumstances where they went on vacation. It, it was an elderly couple and they were the parents of, of another family. And, and, and then there was another family that was involved and there was grandchildren and kids and, and the whole nine yards. Um, and, and there was some health issues on, on, uh, on the elderly side of it. And one of the, the best things that I read ever was that this gentleman was able to pick up his granddaughter and show her the beach, you know, not knowing how much time was still going to be available to them. And, and, and the pride and the sheer joy that that brought him. Um, from being able to show his granddaughter the beach from from their from their balcony and hold her and 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 do those things and create a memory that is 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 priceless. I mean, there's there's no amount of money that you can pay um, for that. And to be able to provide people to have those experiences, to share them with the ones that they care about the most, um, and, and to make those memories is is just so rewarding that sometimes. You know, it really kind of stops you in your tracks and makes you kind of take a deep breath and realize, hey, this is why we do this. You know, it's take care of great people like Evan, employ great people, have that. But but at the end of our day, our mission is to create memories. And when we do that, our brand is going to grow because of it. So so that was one of the most influential, impactful um, messages that I was able to read. Actually, even almost brought tears. Um, it actually did bring tears to my eyes when I read it in person when I was walking through there um but but it was it was very 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 rewarding cool evan really Good stories just, yeah go i it's gonna be hard to top that but um yeah really it's just <laughs> my memorable things are really just if someone has a problem like at the property per se brandon knows we have a lot of problems with some people don't know about the pool alarms we gotta have pool alarms down here and um, I've had to just go to a couple properties just to just to show them like, hey, this is where the button is. You got to press this to turn it off. And like every time I don't know, it, every time I go over there, they're just so thankful that like I showed them like showed them where the button was. It's just the simple things that if you go out of your way, those people will appreciate you even more and have that um, just kind of in the back of their mind. They're like, OK, they they're responsive. They can come here. They're willing to do that. And they'll do that with a smile on their That's what I try to do. So that's just, just, I just get a lot of fulfillment of helping other people. So by me doing that, and it's not even just going over there, just when I'm walking the property, I just have it in the back of my mind, like, Hey, these people are coming in. They're going to probably have a lot of people. It's going to be crazy. So I got to make sure on my end that that can go smoothly for them because I already know how hard it is just with my family. I only have four or five people in my family on our vacations. It's hard to rally us all together. So I can't imagine like Brandon was saying those 20, 25 people you get up to, you know, um, just, just for me to have that in the back of my mind, it, it fulfills just something inside me, I guess you could say. Right. Yeah. And, you know, and everybody, everybody knows it because we all, we all do it. And you, you go to a place and you wonder if something goes wrong is, is there going to be someone there who right. can, who can come and address it? I mean, things happen. You, you get refrigerators break, you get air conditioners break, uh, heaters or, or hot tubs or, you know, something, something has a malfunction right. or you just don't know how to work if we were in a place and, we couldn't figure out how to work the TV. It was yeah. it was too fancy for us boomers, and we had to we had to call them and get them to you know explain how to, how to make the darn TV work. It used something that used to be so simple, 
And nowadays, it can be so hard, so hard that you just simply can't figure it out on your own. Right. So that's cool that, that you that you get to do that. Um, but Bryn, you you're mentioning you, you you mentioned the brand and working on the brand, building the brand, um, taking these extra steps is going to help the brand. What's the competition like that in in this field that, over in that area? Extremely ex, extremely competitive. Um, to say the to, to say the least, there is a lot of people that provide the same service or not the same, but provide similar services. Right? There's a lot of vacation rental management companies in that area um, that want to that obviously are competing for the same amount of business. Um, at the end of the day, we have been very fortunate and blessed to to grow with great people, have great recommendations, work with great owners, work with great clients, great guests. Um, that, that now we're, we have, are, are in a position where, you know, it's, it's, it's easy to just promote our services and do what we want to do and, and show people how we're going to maximize their revenue streams, how we're going to take care of the guests and, and ultimately treat their home like our own, um, and then let them make a decision for themselves. Um, but at the end of the day, I like the competition down on 38 because it makes us all get better. It really does. It's a learning experience each and every day. I learned something new from Evan, from Trey, from Walker, from Miranda, from Ashley, from Donna, to anybody on our staff. I'm learning something new every day. That information, I think, all makes us better. And at the end of the day, the consumer and the client, the owner of the home are only going to benefit from people getting better at what they do each and every day. So I love the competition. And, and again, I, I thrive on it and just really embrace it for what it provides us the ability to do to get better. Yeah. Um, you know, so many people feel like competition is something to be feared, to be destroyed, to be avoided or whatever. But um, I don't know. I, I've never I never really saw it that way. Uh, I kind of appreciate the competition. You can learn from them. You can differentiate from them. Um, but they also help market your industry. And that's kind of what I like the most about the competition is that they market for me because the, the, the more awareness that can be brought to the industry, then people can dig in and start looking at the competition. And probably like you, Brendan, I think if they really study the competition, they're going to pick me because we <laughs> we're, we do things a little better because we've been around a little bit longer um, because maybe we have more positive reviews and those kind of things. So, yeah, I, I see what you mean about thriving on the competition. Um, you know, and, and you've only been uh, really at this in this segment. You said for what about two years since COVID? Yeah, really going full steam for about two years. I mean, again, we self managed for about the last four to five years, um, but it wasn't really until COVID where we really chose to take off. So, to your point, yeah, absolutely. And, and Evan, you're much newer at it. I think you're under a year, correct? Yes, sir. Just about, I want to say, yeah, just about six, coming up on seven months. Yes, sir. Okay. And so now you've got, that's, a, that's enough time for a, good, for a good taste. And you were doing some work in that area before. before. Right. Um, how, do you, how do you see your future in, in this industry? Well, first off, I just want to say thank you to Brandon, because ever since I've joined, um, it's been nothing but a pleasure. Um, some hardships, obviously, that's that's every every company is going to have that. Um, but yeah, I've, I've very, like I was saying earlier, I like the hands-on feel, getting around, driving around, really just being on the move. Um, and every day, what I, what I want to speak on that, every day I wake up and I don't know what what my day is going to look like, to be honest, because like I said, there could be a malfunction with something and someone's having to go out there, whether that be me or my coworkers, we're going out there to look that, look at that. And then that pushes our schedule, maybe 30 minutes to an hour behind what we were planning on doing that day. Um, so really it's just, there's bumps in the road every day, but I like waking up and having something different um, every day, not that sounds kind of crazy now that I'm saying that, but it, it is, it's, it's nice to have that. Cause I don't, it, it just makes me more motivated. That's, that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. And so Evan, let me, let me, 
where would you, where would you like, where do you see yourself at with the organization in five years, three years? Five years. Where do you see yourself? Well, we have talked about this, but yes, I definitely (laughs) definitely am. I'm, I'm, I'm into the content. Brandon knows that my background, that's what I've done. That's what I've enjoyed doing. I enjoy doing property management, obviously, but um, it's just content has been what I've been doing probably since I was 16. I started some Instagram accounts, um, made some money off those, got into Google AdWords, just e-commerce, stuff like that. And just being young, 16, I was talking to these people, heads of marketing, president of marketing, all that other stuff. And I'm just a 16 year old kid making a couple of clicks on my phone and they're gaining hundreds, thousands of followers, getting engagement to their brand all because what I built. And obviously it took money, time, effort for that as well. But in the future with this company, that's what I want to do. I want to be the full-time content creator, director of content, just really showcase all these beautiful homes. Um, Now that it's starting to kind of get a little less less busy down here hopefully i'll be able to get into some of these houses now that there's not so many guests turns and stuff like that just to really get in there shoot some videos drone work to put on our website because i feel like that people like pictures but videos just take it a whole new a whole to a whole nother game in my personal opinion because people can see pictures all day but if you're going in there showing a video of, let's say, hey, the hot tub or the features it has or the features this pool has, um, so on and so forth, that's just where I feel like we can make ourselves different, like you said, the competition and really pushing that guest experience to a further level than anyone can do down here or that anyone is doing down here because it will... um, just make the guests understand what they're going to be walking into and all that other good stuff. So yes, that's where I see myself in five years, hopefully sooner, but I'm, I'm working on it. We're, uh, we're working slowly, but surely. Well, that, well that's cool. Um, Brandon, I, I, I see what you, what you see in Evan, the creative and the, the enthusiasm um, for the, the appreciation for, for what it's all about and what it can do for the company it's it's tough uh i mean i may have to talk to evan afterwards a little bit about content creation because you know in addition to owning the company i'm also the content creator um president of content (laughs) creation and and it's not my thing you know and i i try to reach out and hire interns from a local uh university Mm -hmm. who can do some digital marketing and some help with content creation and it's tough, be, you know, because it's a part-time thing, and they always find they always find a better full-time thing, um, yeah. and, then, and then they're gone. Um, so it's cool that you've got somebody who's who is, is there to stay. Absolutely, yeah. Um, we talked a little bit earlier, before, really before we started, about how important communication was within the industry. Maybe I can get both of you to, to give your take on how important communication is for the industry and your company. So really, like I said earlier, I've worked in multiple, still the service industry down here on 30A, but just something with property management and being with Southern Holiday Homes is that in any business, communication is key, but you don't want to over communicate. You don't want to communicate too little. So you, it's what we're trying to do is find that balance of the right amount of communication, not blowing up everyone's phone 24 hours of the day. Um, but I am on my phone a lot during the day, just checking text messages, making sure guests aren't calling or I am answering the phone to respond to their problems and whatnot like that. But it goes to, it's not just communication within the business with this business, you have to communicate with the guests, let them know, Hey, maybe, this is not working this week because of a previous guest or just unforeseen circumstances and whatnot like that. So it's really, Brandon preaches this. He says, be as transparent as possible. I'm pretty sure that's what you say, but um, yeah, yeah, that's, that's just my take on the whole communication aspect is 
the get you don't want to leave anything out for an employee or my coworker or really the guest who is receiving that product of a uh, home away from home vacation, like we said. Yeah. So, um, so on my side, that, I mean, you know, communication comes in multiple facets, right? There's, there's owner communication, there's guest communication, um, there's team communication, department communication, all of which the, you know, I have, I obviously have to oversee, um, the biggest benefit. So we've been invested heavily in the software. Um, our organization really utilizes a lot of software tools. One that we just implemented recently is, is breezeway. Um, it's, it's a wonderful software from a maintenance and cleaning standpoint. It keeps everything organized. It allows you to assign certain tasks to certain people, put end dates on things, see in real time what's going on, when the task was started, when it ends, how it's completed. But at the end of the day, you know, th there's so many different types of communication, you know, that that's just communication to the team, you know, again, not over communicating, but making sure that people understand what's expected of them. And, and then also, we all hold ourselves accountable to, to taking care of, of my tasks, um, which is something that Breeze line, uh, Breezeway out outlines very easily. Um, Evan gets up every morning and looks on on his breezeway and on his dashboard and says, you know, what are my tasks for the day, and then goes through those. Um, when he runs into challenges, how does how and who does he communicate with? Um, is that multiple people? Is it one person? Um, the answer to that for us is one person. He communicates to our vice president of operations, Trey Supplevato. So. Trey manages all those communications assists, um, Evan and in, in sorting out whatever he needs uh, to sort out with the, with those things as well. So um, communication is, is really, it's so important, um, but taking it a step further and really even going on the guest level where I believe, hey, internally we can have communications, we can over communicate when we can run ourselves a little ragged, which is, hey, that's not efficient for the business and things that you have to get sorted, which, you know, are, are definitely, you know, hey, you're, you're working every day. I don't care if your business is, is 10 years old, two years old, or 25 years old. How can we be more efficient with resources that we have available to us? Um, but how you respond to guests, because there's a, there's a, there's a, a big difference when you're building your, your, building out your CRM and doing that and maintaining clients is, is, you know, are you responding or are you reacting? Because a reaction is based on emotion in a very short period of time that generates an emotional response to a situation where you're maybe not seeing every different perspective and providing you the best way to move forward. So what I always challenge our team to do is to respond. And that takes a minute to hear what's going on, take in the feedback, do a lot more listening than talking, understand what needs to be accomplished, then develop a process or solution, run that by certain people if they hate bring me a solution. So that's what I always encourage our, our team to do as well is to every, bring a solution to say, hey, I've thought about this. I wanna respond. Here's my solution. Here's what I think will work best and then move forward. Um, and, and how you deal with guests, you know, our, our organization is a super host on Airbnb, one of the major platforms. Um, that's because our star rating is an average of 4.8 like 4.8 stars and above. And then you also have um, the time in which we respond, some other things that get taken into the Airbnb algorithm. But at the end of the day, you know, like responding in the right period of time, letting people understand that, you know, that if something happens that you feel there's some empathy, like if I was on vacation and understood what was going on, how would that make me feel, you know, like, and then respond accordingly. Don't just think that you had a bad day and you're running around and you've got to answer a question about a TV remote. No pun intended, by the way. Um, but, and, and that's somehow like impacting your day night, like, just because, again, put yourself in someone else's shoes and we're in the business to deliver an incredible vacation experience. Um, and so we need to respond to our guests versus reacting to what they say. And, and as long as we do that and we do it very timely, and routinely, and we're on it and we fix it or we're in communication and we're helping along the way, people are, are very understandable. You know, again, these are private residences. These are, this is not a hotel. Um, so, um, but we, we do try to react extremely um, urgently to any requests that can enhance a, a guest vacation. That's cool. Obviously, almost any business competition is, I mean, not competition, but communication is so key, so critical. Um, I see we're about out of time. It might be because there's two of you. The time has seemed to have flown by, but I, I really enjoyed talking with both of you. We may have to do an, another session just to get some more information in. And 
I don't know, maybe it's just because it's all about vacation and beaches that it's uh, that it's a fun topic. <laughs> Right. Um, it, it is it is cool that to have a uh, to have that as your job, right? Um, which is not doesn't sound like much of a, a job to me. It just sounds like a fun way to live, personally. <laughs> um, but before we go, let me get um, how how folks can reach you. Give your your social sites, your contact information, whatever you want to blast out there, so that folks can find you. So Evan was right. You can follow us on Instagram. So Southern Holiday Homes um, on Instagram. You can reach us on our, our on our direct line at 850-739-1667. You can contact us at info at southernholidayhomes.com or you can visit our website to explore all of our properties at www.southernholidayhomes.com. You can search by private pool, bikes, golf carts, amenities, sleep size, and you can view all the inventory but there's a, a plethora of ways to, to get in touch with us and we would welcome the opportunity to take care of anybody that wants a great vacation experience. So thank you again very much for allowing us the opportunity. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mark. Perfect. Thanks for, thanks for taking the time to be on with us. Um, that'll be it for today's episode of Property Pros Podcast. For other episodes, check us out on Facebook or YouTube at Property Pros Podcast. And we'll see you next time. Thank you very much.